Yeah, it's filming, right? I'm gonna put that on YouTube. No, no, no. <laughs> right, okay, so as I said, I've got a Valent 937 or 837 at home. This sit here. It is all working, uh, although it's got a problem. Quite a serious problem. The main heat exchanger on the boiler is becoming blocked. So the reason I say it's a serious problem is unlike Worcesters and Weismans and other things, the heat exchanger on a Valent 837 uh, has parallel circuits. Um, I've drawn a little diagram to show you that. So excuse this terrible drawing, but let's, uh... so if you look at that, so basically what I'm saying here, imagine this should flow and return, which is, uh... let me come a bit closer here. This should flow and return, which is the wrong way around, but regardless, this is your flame here. The heat exchanger on a valent looks like this. It's got your flow, and then it's got lots of little pipes that go to the return. And all that's done is that's coiled up and put into a round heat exchanger. Um, so you're, basically your, your return wall comes up here and it, it can go down whichever coil it wants. They're all in parallel. Um, so it doesn't matter which one it goes down to the water. So as with anything, it finds the path of least resistance. So if one gets blocked, which let's pretend, just put a line through this. Okay, if that one there, just looking at we're in shot here. Okay, so if that one there became blocked, no water would pass through it, but it continued to go through the rest of them. So what would happen on that block coil is the coil would blacken, which you can see as a visual cue. Um, but quite a lot of the time, uh, all that will happen is your boiler will become very noisy, but it will continue to work. So my boiler is at the stage of being quite noisy um it is still working because i usually run my hot water at 40 degrees you know i've got three kids in the house i uh, don't really need it any hotter than that so mine is partially blocked i would say my i haven't got a blocked coil but it's nearly blocked uh which is presenting itself some noise now i only noticed this because i had a gas safe inspection on monday and to do that i mean i haven't looked at my boiler in five years so you know that, what did i say about the cobbler and his shoes yeah it's the same for heating engineers so for the first time in five years, I put my boiler on max rate and it started making quite a bad noise. So this is how a valent heat exchanger works and why they're very difficult to flush. Because if that one on the bottom there was blocked, uh, when you put a power flush machine on it, it would still just go through the coils that are unblocked and wouldn't necessarily unblock it. So the heat exchanger on this boiler, um, trade price to me is about, 806 pound plus that so that's a lot more than I really want to spend on it um, I'll give you a little rundown of this boiler let me show you this first okay so this is how other heat exchangers work so if you're talking about like a, a Weissman or a Worcester you have your flow and return and you have one pipe so it can't there's full flow is always going through that one pipe if that one pipe begins to get blocked and you stick a power flush machine on it, you can unblock it because there's only one path for the water to take from that machine. Uh, therefore, other heat exchangers are easier to unblock than, when I say the valent, it, it, that the heat exchanger isn't just a valent, it's a G and only heat exchanger that, as everyone knows, is in a lot of boilers, from back seas to um, heat lines to, you know, whatever. It's in a lot of boilers. This type um, is much easier to unblock when it becomes blocked. So... I'll give you a rundown of this boiler. This boiler is 10 years old this year. Um, I've only serviced it once in 10 years, which was uh, at five years old and I changed the G10 seal. Um, other than that, I've replaced the diverter valve. So let me, I'll just show you inside it. That's been replaced, there is one in there. So, this boiler still has the original pump, the Wilo pump that was problematic with the big nuts. Still has it, never went wrong. Boiler still has the original black rubber pipes within it. I'll, uh, I'll film that close up now in my phone. All this boiler's had in, uh, in five years is the G10 seal got done. 
Um, it's still on the original Wilo pump. It's still got the original hoses in it. Um, so just to divert a valve, that's it. So basically this boiler owes me, for 10 years service, it owes me the cost of a divert valve, about 110 quid, 120 quid, and one service. So if this was a private customer, after installing this boiler, they would have invested about, shall we say, 275 quid. That's all they would have spent in 10 years on the boiler. So, so I'm not complaining about the longevity of this boiler. 10 years, it's never been uh, it's never been cleaned, hasn't got inhibitor in it, because uh, I fitted it and then I'd moved the rad and I drained it down you know, within a month and I never put inhibitor back in it. So this boiler's 10 years, no inhibitor, and it's got a noisy heat exchange. So I was gonna do all the filming today on trying to unblock this heat exchanger in this boiler, um, but I'm not now because I've got other things to do, unfortunately. So I'm gonna do it later in the week. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the noise and film the noise so you can hear it. Uh, and I've got a glamorous assistant who's going to help me do that. Okay, so I'm now going to... Damn it. Got a baby crying. Got to go. Okay, so I'm going to show you the noise the boiler's creating. Um, and to help me do that, I'm going to introduce Aiden. He's going to be my glamorous assistant. So, Aiden's going to. This is Aiden. He's eight years old and he's uh, going to try and learn a little bit about boilers. So, we're going to teach him how to lock a valent boiler on high. Alright, so st stand just to the side so people can see what you're going to do. Now, what I want you to do, Aiden, I want you to press, the hold, press and hold the plus button and then press the reset button, which is the flame with a cross for it. So, no, no, you. Do it with one finger here, and then use your other eight-year-old finger to press that button and keep holding the plus. Let go of the reset and keep holding the plus. Keep holding it, the two dots will stop in a second. Okay, now let go. Now press it to P1. Press the plus, that's it. And now press the I button, and I'm gonna lift the mic up here so people can hear. Press the I button. So what you've done is you've made the boiler go on high. So that's like driving a car as fast as you could ever drive it, okay? That's what this boiler's about to do. And uh, hopefully we get the noise. Just a waiting game for it to light now. And it takes a little while. So basically what you're hearing there is the coils vibrating where they're overheating within the boiler. So all them coils in that picture, which I'll show you again. Yeah, so basically what's happening is one of them coils is blocked and it is vibrating and that noise is it hitting the other coils. So hopefully we've caught this early enough. Because trust me, if my boiler was doing that, you can hear this downstairs. Now, we're only getting this to do this now because it's on P1. Um, so basically, hopefully I can get this fixed uh, without having to change the main heat exchanger. So Aiden, do you want to press the reset button for me again? There we go. All right. You know it's filming, right? I'm going to put that on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so as you've seen there, um, 
the boiler's definitely got a problem with the main heat exchanger. Um, so what I'm going to try and do to this boiler, I'm going to try and descale this plate heat, this main heat exchanger in situ, knowing full well that generally speaking you cannot do that. If that doesn't work, I'm then going to remove the whole heat exchanger and try and build an adapter to connect it to my power flush. Um, I've got nothing to lose here because if it breaks, ooh, that sounded terrible. If it breaks, I'm, I'm already prepared to fit a new boiler. Um, I've got the money set aside for it. If I completely ruin this thing, I'll go and get another one and put it on the wall. And that's the privilege I have of being a gas engineer. Um, so, the PCB stuff. This PCB in this boiler is fine, okay? I've got uh, another couple of Ecotech PCBs with issues. So what I'll do, I'm going to swap the PCBs into this boiler, run it and show you the issues with the boards. And I'm going to guess, because I don't have any real, I have no knowledge of electronics, I'm going to guess what I think is wrong with them, um, just by using my eyes. Nothing more detailed than that. And we're going to try and rectify the issues with the PCBs. So, fingers crossed, uh, get this boiler fixed without having to fit a new one and like I say I wouldn't do this in a customer's house because the likelihood of this fixing it is quite remote um, hopefully I've caught it early enough that I can do that but I don't know so uh, you'll have to tune in to find out what I'm going to do I'm going to take a day off work next week to do this um, and upload the video I was going to try and do it all today but just just setting this up for this because the loft's so dark um, it took a long time um, so I've lost, I've lost a day basically. Well, I've lost a good few hours of the day. So, but now I know how to set it up. It'd be much quicker next time. So next time you see me in this boiler, um, I'll be putting, I'll be isolating it, chucking a load of descaler in it, and running it, and seeing if we can get that issue resolved. Um, and I might have a glamour, glamorous help of that day. I don't know. All right. So I'll see you soon. Sorry, it's not today. So this is a boiler with a burnt coil or block coil. You see it's browner than the rest. If you look when I go up here, see that's browner. And uh, you see that view there. You can really see there's two coils next to each other that are brown. So a coil is three uh, rings in length that makes up one coil. But as you can see, that's how you can identify one quite easily uh, when you're visually looking in the boiler. So that coil will be overheating and making noise on that boiler, but that boiler works fine. That's the thing with the valence. They will still work with a block coil, they just become noisy.